They live beneath the endless winds of the north and along the coasts where the sea and sky seem to merge. They built ships that cut across oceans and left behind sagas that still echo in our imagination. They were not myths, nor were they monsters. They were humans, sailors, raiders, traders, and settlers who hunted, sang, told stories, and raised children in the harsh northern light. And then, almost as suddenly as they rose to dominate the north, the Viking Age came to an end. What remained were their sagas, their rune stones, their ships buried beneath mounds of earth, and their bones sealed in cold northern soil. For centuries, scholars, scientists, and storytellers have been haunted by a single question. Who were the Vikings, really? Were they a distinct people bound by blood, a pure northern race? Or were they something more complicated, a mosaic of identities, a cultural phenomenon rather than a biological one? For generations, the answers were arguments, nationalism, romanticism, myth, fragments of truth, but none complete. Archaeology told one story, medieval chronicles another. To their enemies, they were marauders. To themselves, they were explorers. But the bones were silent and the question remained. And then, in the 21st century, ancient DNA began to speak. Thanks to the convergence of careful archaeology, cutting-edge genetics, and a handful of relentless researchers, we can now read the Viking story written in the molecules of their bones. The story does not begin with a single battle or a single people. It does not begin only in the fjords of Norway or the forests of Sweden. It begins in a far more complex network of peoples and places, a stretching across continents, connected by bonds of trade, migration, and identity. In the 19th century, Scandinavian antiquarians uncovered magnificent burial mounds filled with swords, brooches, beads, and ships. These spectacular finds seem to confirm the myth of a distinct northern race, a people of singular blood and culture. For decades, this idea of a homogenous Viking identity persisted, shaped as much by nationalism as by scholarship. The image was powerful, tall, blonde warriors united by ancestry and language, storming across Europe like a pure tide of the north. But the truth, hidden in bones and teeth, waited for a new kind of science. In 2020, a team led by Esk Villerslev at the University of Copenhagen published the largest Viking DNA study ever conducted. They examined the genomes of more than 400 individuals from burial sites across Scandinavia, Britain, Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, and beyond. Their findings were nothing short of revolutionary. The Vikings, it turned out, were not one people at all. Their genetic signatures reveal deep and unexpected diversity. Some of the supposed Viking warriors buried in Norway carried ancestry from the British Isles. Others in England carried Scandinavian roots mixed with genes from Southern Europe. Still others traced their lineage eastward to the steppes of Eurasia. The DNA spoke with undeniable clarity. Viking identity was not written in blood alone. It was a cultural affiliation, a way of life, a shared set of practices and symbols that cross genetic boundaries. Vikingness was portable. It could be adopted. It could be lived. The old picture of a pure northern race shattered under the weight of genetic evidence. Instead, a new image came into focus, one of mixture, openness, and change. Archaeologists had already seen hints of this in the ground. In Orkney, men buried with Viking swords and ornaments turned out to be genetically similar to local Scots. In Burka, Sweden, one of the richest Viking graves contained not a man, but a woman buried with weapons, long assumed to be male until DNA revealed otherwise. In Iceland, graves revealed settlers with ancestry, stretching not only to Scandinavia, but also to the British Isles. And in Greenland, Viking settlements carried genetic signatures shaped by centuries of migration. These were not isolated anomalies. They were patterns. Viking identity could be adopted by locals, reinforced by language, belief, and shared enterprise. It was a social identity, open to newcomers. But how did this transformation happen? The clues lie in the world the Vikings inhabited. Scandinavia, in the first millennium, was not an isolated corner of Europe. It was a crossroads. The Baltic Sea was a highway linking tribes and kingdoms. The rivers of Russia opened routes deep into Asia. Trade networks stretched south to Byzantium and east to the Caliphate. Along these routes moved not only silver, silk, and spices, but also people. Slaves captured in raids, traders seeking wealth, 
women brought through marriage alliances, all contributed to the genetic mosaic of the Viking Age. This constant flow of goods and people reshaped societies. It allowed Viking culture to spread not like a flame that burns quickly and fades, but like a tide that rolls outward, touching and transforming the lands around it. Ancient DNA confirmed what the artifacts hinted at. Instead of one origin, there were many. Instead of a single spark, there was a constant exchange. The evidence grew. Researchers compared ancient Viking genomes to modern populations. They discovered that the genetic landscape of the Viking Age was already marked by centuries of movement and mixture. A man buried in Denmark might have had Baltic ancestry. A woman buried in Norway might have had roots in Ireland. The Viking world was not a fortress of blood purity. It was a web of connections. Even the places where Vikings lived whispered the same refrain. In Iceland, settlers mixed with Celtic populations brought from the British Isles. In Greenland, Norse settlers adapted to the Arctic landscape but carried genes that spoke of long journeys. In Orkney, locals became Vikings in death, if not in birth, buried with swords and ornaments as markers of identity. And yet, for centuries, the myth of Viking purity persisted. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed warrior became an icon in nationalist ideologies, a symbol of racial superiority. But the DNA told a different story, one of complexity, of diversity, of a people defined not by isolation, but by openness. This discovery transforms our understanding of one of history's most iconic groups. The Vikings were not simply destroyers, but also integrators. Not only raiders, but also settlers, traders, explorers, and bridge builders. Their power did not come from blood purity, but from networks, from connections that stretched across seas and continents. Picture them. Ships cutting through fog, sails billowing like ghosts. Camps set along riverbanks where languages mingled and goods changed hands. Winter halls filled with firelight, where warriors, farmers, and traders sat together, telling stories of distant lands a people who carried swords but also scales, who raided monasteries and yet traded silk, amber, and furs. Their identity was not locked in their genes, but in the shared symbols of ships, runes, and sagas. The lesson is profound. Behind the legend of blood and conquest lies a reality of mixture and connection. The Vikings were not a people apart. They were a people connected. And the final question is not just who they were, but what they can teach us. In a world still wrestling with questions of identity, purity, and belonging, the Vikings offer a powerful lesson. Their strength did not come from isolation, but from openness. Their influence did not flow from a single bloodline, but from many. Their legacy was not purity, but connection. The real origin of the Vikings lies not in blood, but in identity and connection.